Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. Sound waves from a hammer striking a nail travel at 1,000 feet per second. Find an equation of the set of points you would hear the sound at one-fourth of a second after the nail was struck. All right, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course I'll explain exactly how to solve this problem. Now, a lot of you out there may not have studied the algebra necessary to actually find the solution, and that is okay, but to, at least you can think about this problem from a common sense standpoint and try to uh, develop uh, some sort of, um, you know, kind of idea of what you think the solution may look like, okay? And even if you haven't had the algebra necessary to solve this problem, I will fully explain this and you'll totally understand everything by the time I finish this video. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, question one more time before I show you the answer. So we have sound waves coming from a hammer striking a nail. Okay, so a, a hammer hits a nail and uh, the sound uh, is traveling at a thousand feet per second. So obviously there's a lot of information going on here, but that's kind of the vision in your head that you want to be thinking about, right? So we have a hammer striking a nail and that sound is traveling at a thousand feet per second. What we want to do here is find an equation of the set of points we would hear the sound after one fourth of a second. So obviously after the hammer hits the nail, the sound starts emanating out. And so we wanna find an equation of all the set of points that we would hear the sound at one fourth of a second after the nail was struck. All right, so kind of a bit of a physics uh, problem. And if you're totally confused, well, you know, as I go through the solution, this will make sense, but let's go to take a look at the answer. The correct answer is the following. Okay, so this is the equation. All right, let's go back to the problem, right? So the problem is asking, find an equation of the set of points we would hear the sound at one fourth of a second after the nail was struck. And this is the equation right here. X squared plus Y squared is equal to 62,500. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, that is so impressive. Matter of fact, I gotta give you a happy face and A++ a 1,000% multiple stars. Matter of fact, if you're in my math class, I would say just take the rest of the year off. I don't know how uh, you got so smart in algebra. You might be watching that guy on YouTube. But uh, anyways, if you are totally lost, you're like, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't even understand the question. Well, let's go ahead and do something about that by getting into the solution right now. But uh, if in fact you got this right, that was fantastic. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the question again. And here we, uh, we are dealing with a math word problem. Now this is uh, specifically an algebra word problem and uh, some of you out there that have, may have uh, taken physics, okay, is uh, physics such a great course? Matter of fact, if I wasn't a mathematician, I would probably uh, become a physicist, but the language of physics is um, math, right? So if you like uh, science and engineering and whatnot, you gotta know a lot of math, but in order to solve a math uh, word problem, or a physics word problem, doesn't make a difference, you want to use the rule of three, which is read the problem at least three times uh, so you really understand what's going on. But after you read the problem, and of course here we have a lot of information, we already read it three times, we need to kind of model what's going on. Now, of course, we need to understand what the question is, and the question is a little bit um, unusual, if you will. It is find an equation. Okay, so we're not looking for a specific unknown value. We're actually looking for an equation. And of course, we saw the answer. Now, the equation uh, represents the set of points we would hear the sound at one fourth of a second. 
So we have to kind of model or visualize this situation, and that's what I was kind of suggesting uh, for those of you out there that uh, may not um, know the algebra to solve this problem, but at least you can kind of visualize it. In other words, don't give up on a math uh, problem uh, just because you don't know all the math. Take it uh, as far as you possibly can. So let's go ahead and kind of visualize the problem. All right, so uh, first of all, we have to think about sound. What is the nature of sound? Well, sound kind of works like a little, um, let's suppose you had a, uh, well, let's, let me kind of use a, another analogy here or another kind of an example. And this is not going to be a science lesson, but uh, we need to understand how sound emanates from a point. So it emanates basically the same way as if you were to throw a little rock or a pebble into, uh, let's say, a nice calm lake. What happens? Well, it's going to go, once that pebble or rock hits the water, you're going to see rings, right? So you're, basically the waves are going to emanate out in all directions. And that's effectively uh, what is going on with sound. Okay, so here, let's suppose this is our little hammer, okay, and this is our nail. Once the hammer hits that nail, the sound is going to travel in all directions. Okay, so in other words, sound doesn't just travel in only one direction. You know, naturally, of course, you can kind of um, direct sound, but sound in its kind of natural state, after this hammer hits this nail, the sound is going to be heard in all directions, right? So if you're kind of, you know, if we have people around this situation, everyone's going to hear that sound at the same time. So let's suppose someone's standing here, someone's standing here. Once this hammer hits the nail, the sound starts. Now remember, in this particular problem, the sound is going to be emanating out at 1,000 feet per second. So yes, indeed, sound has speed. Uh, of course, most of you out there probably know about sonic booms and the speed of sound. As little airplanes fly through the sky, and little jets and whatnot, they break the sound barrier, then boom, you have this uh, big sonic boom. So yes, sound is traveling at a certain speed. Now, uh, you know, again, um, yeah, because I have um, an engineering background as well, I just love to kind of talk about this stuff, but hopefully um, most people are pretty aware. Yes, indeed, I remember when I see a little airplane going really fast, it, it appears to, it's kind of like outrunning its sound. So anyways, uh, sound, again, does have speed. And in this particular case, the sound emanating from the nail after the hammer uh, struck it is a thousand uh, feet per second. Okay, so uh, what we need here is more of a mathematical model uh, of what's going on, and that model is a circle. Okay, so here is the sound where it starts off, and uh, these rings here would represent the various uh, points in time where someone would hear that sound. Okay, so if you're a mile away from this uh, uh, event, you know, you're going to have to wait till that sound reaches you to hear the hammer hitting the nail. Okay, now that's the part of the problem, or this is the part of the problem that I was hoping uh, most of you would be able to kind of at least think about and say, well, I think sound might be traveling in terms of like a circle pattern. And if you figure that out, that is outstanding. Now we're going to need, uh, need to know a thing or two about what circles look like in algebra and geometry. Okay, what are the equations of circles? And once we understand this, well, this problem becomes quite easy. All right, so let's go ahead and get into that right now. And uh, what we need to understand is that there is an equation of a circle. Okay, so there's an equation of a circle, and a basic equation of a circle is the following. Now, this is a circle where its center is at the origin. So for those of you that are familiar with a basic x, y plane, a circle that's centered right here, and the origin is the point zero, zero. Now, we could have all different sorts of circles. We can have circles over here where the center is different, and we can have circles over here. They're all different sizes and all different uh, locations, but in um, kind of the most basic terms, and I'm not going to go into circles that are translated into different parts of the xy plane, but in a, a circle that is centered, again, at the origin, the point zero, zero, uh, its equation is x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, and r is the radius of the circle. Okay, so this is the simple kind of equation that we're going to be using 
about circles. Now, when do you learn about this in mathematics? Some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I never saw that, uh, saw this before. Well, this topic here is part of a broader topic called conic uh, sections, and it's such an awesome topic in math. Uh, typically, this is taught, uh, sometimes it's taught a little bit in Algebra 2 or College Algebra. You really get uh, into this topic in courses like pre-calculus. Now, this word conic section, just to kind of digress here for a second. So let's imagine a cone. Okay, so here's like an upside down ice cream cone. So conic sections is like cone sections. So if we have a cone and I kind of split that cone and let's suppose this cone was sitting on a nice table that was parallel to the ground. If I split this cone parallel to the bottom of the cone or the base of the cone, and I look down, what am I? What shape will I see? Okay, and I'm kind of doing this on the fly a little bit, but if you kind of look down, you're going to see a circle. Okay, so that's going to be the shape of a circle from a cone. Now, of course, this is a circular cone, but let's suppose you, and let me kind of erase this here real quick. I'm just trying to give uh, some of you out there a sense of this subject uh, in mathematics that is just an awesome uh, topic. Again, conic sections. Now, well, let's suppose we chop the cone kind of on an angle, okay? So now the top of that um, portion will look a little bit like this, okay, like an oval, and that is called an ellipse, okay? So th these are all different shapes that you are going to study in conic sections. And then, of course, if we chop, chop it this way, we're going to end up with parabolas, and you got these other things called hyperbolas. Anyways, conic sections, huge topic. In mathematics, something you absolutely need to know. And if you want to learn about conic sections and really get into this, if you're studying uh, this level of math, you got to check out my pre-calculus course. You can find a link to that in the description below. But uh, anyways, uh, this is just a real basic equation for a circle that is centered at uh, the um, origin, zero, zero. All right, so now let's go ahead and put all this together and uh, take a look at this problem again knowing that we're thinking about sound traveling in terms of uh, rings, okay? Now, we have the speed of the sound after the hammer uh, struck it. Now, it's traveling at 1,000 feet per second. So we're interested in um, an equation of what, uh, when we would hear that sound at one-fourth of a second. So how far did this uh, sound travel in one-fourth of a second? Well, if it travels 1,000 feet, in one second, in one quarter of a second, it would travel what? Well, hopefully you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, it would travel 250 feet. You would be absolutely right, because if it's traveling at 1,000 feet per second, all we have to do is just take one-fourth of this, and we'll get how far um, it's going to travel in uh, the sound, how far the uh, sound will travel. It would be one-fourth of the 1,000 feet per second. Okay, so in... Uh, in one quarter of a second, it's going to travel 1,000 divided by 4, which is 250 feet. Okay, so now we are getting someplace with this problem. And hopefully you're uh, kind of saying, you know what, I'm actually understanding. And if that's the case, well, then that is the whole point of this video. All right, so the sound went 250 feet and one-fourth of a second. So here is our uh, sound emanating from the, that nail and it's traveling in all directions, okay? So how far did it go? How far did that sound go in one-fourth of a second? It went out to, uh, 250 feet. So that is the radius of this circle, okay? So it went out 250 in all directions. So now what we have is a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 250 feet. So it's pretty easy to build an equation knowing this information because I just kind of showed you the general form x squared plus uh, y squared plus, or no, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So let's go to take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel before we finish up this interesting problem. Now, I put these videos together for one reason only, and that is to help people learn math. So I am a teacher, but as a teacher, I need students, okay? And the more students I have, the happier I am. There are so many people out there that need help in mathematics. And uh, unfortunately, 
Right now, it's not looking good uh, in terms of uh, global proficiency in math. I think it's because uh, there's just uh, oversaturation of technology. Okay, now, yes, indeed, I'm using technology to teach, but I am teaching with basically a paper and a pen. Yes, it's kind of fancy technology, but you know, kind of using kind of an old school approach. And a lot of uh, students these days, you know, when you're in a highly technical environment, you know, people want answers fast. People are like, hey, you know, I could just click a button on my, my phone or my computer and get the answers fast. Well, listen, when it comes to learning and comprehending everything you need to know in math, that is a slow process because there is a lot to know. And, you know, you got to be willing to put in the effort and practice, practice, practice. So there's no secret at getting better at math. But if you're willing to do the work, what you need is great comprehensive math instruction. And that is what I try to do on my channel. So the best way to support my work is to hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this problem up. So now that we have a pretty good understanding of uh, basic circle equations, so again, x uh, squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Now, uh, what does this x and y represent? Well, x and y is just an xy point. Now, I'm assuming that you have some basic algebra knowledge, but an xy point, or this is what we call an ordered pair, right? There's a uh, pair of... Um, numbers here and there is in a specific there they are in a specific order this is a coordinate or a point on the x y plane we put a little y in there so that's what the x and y represent and of course we have a radius all right so now we know that our radius is 250 and this is a an equation of a circle centered at the origin okay all we have to do is just plug in this 250 for the radius it is uh, as simple as that now if you had this as your answer that is perfectly fine matter of fact that is a great answer as well so we have x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared again r is the radius uh, which is 250 but we could take that 250 and square it and 250 squared is 62,500 so here is the answer Okay, so again, don't feel bad if you didn't understand the algebra to do this problem, but hopefully you learned a thing or two. And most importantly, I'm trying to get a lot of you out there excited to learn more about conic sections and more advanced math. And uh, even furthermore, uh, if you have any interest in physics, uh, take physics. All right, physics is such an awesome course, but you need to know a good amount of math to be successful in physics. All right, now again, if you're looking at this video and you're saying, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I wanna learn more about conic sections and all this advanced stuff. Well, if you're at this level of math, you gotta check out my pre-calculus course. You can find a link to it in the description below. If you're at a more, um, you know, I don't wanna say more basic level, but if you're studying basic algebra or basic geometry, um, I have, uh, you know, um, those respective courses as well. You can see all my courses and the links to them in the description, but hopefully this little video helped you out, or if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.